So before we get into the Southern Ohio Forest Rally, I think we need to address the big red clown shoe in the room. Uh, so the Z car came up for sale before 100 Acre Wood. I had reached out to Sebastian who had it for sale. Uh, once we got out there to pick it up, I realized that it was very cramped in that cockpit. And I was trying to figure out what we are going to do about this car. Originally we kind of bought it with the intent to pull some parts off of it for the new car build. Uh, but Kelsey hopped in there and she fit really well. So knowing that the car was a good fit for Kelsey, I uh, thought it'd be a good idea to surprise her for her birthday by entering her as a driver in the Southern Ohio Forest Rally. It was so overwhelming um, to be entered and so Calvin decided that we should maybe take the car down to Rally Ready so we could do a good shakedown, I could get some seat time in it so that I wouldn't be hopping in a car that's brand new to us with no experience in it. There's a video out about that, so you should definitely check it out. Now we're ready to jump on into the rally, and rallies always start with reconnaissance. Calvin, how was your first recce as a co-driver? Uh, I think it went pretty well. I had a lot to pick up on right away. I knew how writing notes worked, I knew all the pacing, I knew the numbers, all the different modifiers, but I never actually written them down. So learning the shorthand was actually kind of a challenge for me. How'd it go for you, Kelsey? It was really overwhelming. The first couple stages I struggled, but I did find a groove as um, reconnaissance went on and got better at writing notes of the day. Uh, so we got to the rally, got the car through tech inspection, everything went really great through there. We passed tech. We did. Uh, really no issues with that. Until we got to Park Expose and the car began to overheat. Uh, this was definitely a problem. Uh, we got to Park Expose a little bit early, thinking we'd have time to go grab some dinner. And we did not have time for that. I was <laughs> pulling my hair out, trying to figure out, oh, the fans aren't working, it's not getting enough airflow, something else is going on, thermostat stuff. It was just low and cool. We sorted out the cooling issue just in time for Park Expose. Now, this is the first Park Expose we had been able to have in a while, and it was really special to have fans and spectators back again and I had been hanging on to a very special box from Ben Newburn that contained a bunch of Matchbox cars, and they were all of Yui Rosquist, the first woman to win the Argentinian Grand Prix. And so those Matchbox cars are really, really special to me, and I have the privilege of being able to hand them out to some of the young women and other ladies that were there competing. It was such a special moment that I'll remember forever. Uh, so the very first stage actually started just outside of Park Exposé, so the start line was literally just 10 feet from where Park Exposé was. So it was actually mostly all tarmac, uh, just running through the park, and there was even a jump towards the end there. Yeah, after what happened in the last episode, I think you can maybe forgive me for not trying to jump the clown shoe. So after the first stage, we headed out into the woods. How did that go, Kelsey? Oh gosh. Okay, so that really the rally guides threw everything at me all at once. There was twisty hairpins, muddy, nasty, slippery stuff. There was like bits of old craggy tarmac that were just like a mess. There was fog. The rally lights didn't work, which I guess is sort of fine because there was fog anyway and I couldn't see. I got passed so many times on the first two stages and you know what? I'm kind of glad we don't have any video of it because it was probably mostly it would have just been me crying in my helmet. My note reading went well. By the end of the day on day one, I was completely convinced I wasn't cut out to be a rally driver and started to think I had no business driving day two. But after a wonderful pep talk from Calvin, he convinced me that day two would be better and I should go out and try again. Yes, yeah, uh, definitely got thrown in the deep end with that one. You got probably all the worst conditions I've ever seen in a while in all the years we've been there. So it was a good start. It was fun <laughs> and terrifying. I think the roads are going to be better today, running in the daylight. The roads are a bit wider out here, they're not as slimy as 
the ones from last night. They're a bit more forgiving. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I think after yesterday, my goals today are just build my confidence each stage. We have a very long day today. I think like 100 stage miles. So I'm going to get plenty of seat time as long as I keep it on the road. So day two was a lot better than day one, for sure. How did the stages feel for you? I started to actually build my confidence over each stage after being so terrified Friday night, I was very cautious the first couple stages and then I started to find a groove. I got better at listening to the pace notes and being able to, you know, sort of decode those and then drive what I was hearing you um, say and started building a lot more confidence and speed. I think it all went really well. Uh, there were some growing pains, certainly, just figuring out the notes, pacing, I think had the biggest struggle with, uh, just getting the timing right, especially the transitions to the tarmac. Things get a lot faster when you get on tarmac because they're just so much more grip. And it's hard just to you know, figure out how to deliver those turns ahead of time. But overall, you know, I feel like I did a pretty good job. Incredibly proud of that fact. Yeah, our goal was to get to the event and finish it, and that we succeeded at. Yeah, it's always a really big deal when you finish a rally, especially if it's your first rally in some way, shape, or form. So, special thanks to our crew, Nick Resbeck and Clayton Aiden, for making sure service was set up and we were well cared for in the hot, hot temperatures down in Ohio. Also, Jake Nowak for coming out and taking some awesome video and awesome photos. And also we want to thank our sponsors, Hawk Performance. And with me doing all that chicken breaking, uh, they held up, that's for sure. And thanks to all the organizers and volunteers. They put on an amazing event. And despite all the struggles they had with radio communications, they were able to get everybody back out on stage and finish the event out. All right, Calvin, what's coming up next for us for Cabrata Works? Yeah, so at this point, uh, we've recorded this a little bit late. So we've actually already gone to the Alpine Festival, the Grid Life event in Colorado. We did the rally sprint there with Rally Ready, and we will have a video coming out very soon about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and tell everybody else about our channel. Including your dog. They love this stuff. <laughs>